Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Yo Big D, and I am back with another video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, um, today we got a different type of video. We got a creeper, a creeper, some creeping us. Uh, today we're gonna act into the creepiest 911 calls. I don't know what we're gonna hear, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. Is the other guy still there? Yeah. I need a large pizza. Alright. How about medical? You need medical? No. What pepperoni? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 creepiest 911 calls. <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking what the fuck? at the scariest and most disturbing emergency calls that can be found on the internet. Do you have what it takes to be a- What the hell is this on his head, bro? What is this? Just like, is that, is that the little Uzi vert? What the, what the, the time in the head? What the hell is that? 911 dispatcher, let us know in the comments. Number 10, Checkington Sinclair killed- I'm back lead, bro. Yeah, man thought he was Drizzy Drake. Put a Z in his, head. his wife. Being a 911 dispatcher must be an incredibly difficult job, especially when having to deal with terrifying calls like this. A man named Checkington Sinclair calls in and reports a killing. When the dispatcher asks who committed the killing, Sinclair responds that he did. So the motherfucker just self reported. I'm just playing Among Us. A murder has been committed by who? On me, man. Are you? Yes, ma'am. The dispatcher remains calm and professional, but the slight shudders in her voice betray her panic. The creepy nature of the call comes not only in the act itself, but in the eerily calm way that Bio hazardous. It's a bomba club. Sinclair describes the proceedings. We got into an argument and she came at me with the knife. And so you shot her? Sinclair was arrested and how is this weird like this is like this this doesn't this happen on the like, ah. hmm. hmm. I don't know what happens on the daily so I can't like say like no I mean but like it's not like it's not like weird I thought I was gonna say uh, there's a rat in my house I thought I was expecting that bro like this guy is self-reporting here bro is playing among us charged with the deaths of his pregnant wife and her unborn child he was found guilty and given two life sentences. Experts believe with the new development today, the indictment of- Two life sentences? What What the fuck? How does it even happen? Given two life sentences. What the fuck? Like, is he supposed to die and come back and then do and then save it another sentence? What the fuck? Experts believe with the new development today, the indictment of first degree murder, prosecutors could go after the death penalty in this case. Number nine, Jeremy Schmelzer can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your name is, is first of all Jeremy. Okay, okay, that's I might let you slide with that. But if your surname is Schmelzer, you're a serial killer, bro. If this is your surname right now, don't give a fuck. You're a serial killer, blood. Jeanette Watson of Prince William County, Virginia, received a call from 22 year old Jeremy Schmelzer. The panicked Schmelzer reports that he can't breathe, and this is evident in his manner of speech. One, two, one, two, two. <laughs> it's very jerky and breathy, and Schmelzer can uh, only get out a couple of brief words at a time. He's unable to give his address, and at one point, he even stops responding completely. Yeah. That, 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 he's just fat, bro. Come on now, it's right, bro's out of breath. Bro, just wait down the stairs. There, Jeremy. Jeremy, you still there? Luckily, brother, brother, I told you to start eating them chips. I told you, yeah. Who, who told you to stop running on that treadmill? Nobody. Put put this on yourself. Watson remained calm and had a coworker input his cell phone number into a new GPS system called Rapid SOS. The system was able to locate Schmelzer's exact location, and he was saved from a potentially fatal asthma attack. He later met with Watson to thank her in person. I mean, I could say a thank you a million times, but there's nothing to really show. How, how is this weird? Bro just had an asthma attack. That's a normal 911 call. That's a, like, is everything just weird now? Uh, uh, um, my friend, like, bro, 911 is the point for these calls. How is this weird? This is not creep at all. 
This is this is like 911 legitimate shit. Oh, how appreciative I am. Number eight, the Bigfoot call. Oh, and now okay. For now we're getting deep. Lighter. You know, if you consider Bigfoot lighter, the movie Bigfoot County opens with a creepy 911 call. The caller reports a man like Thing in his yard measuring 6'9, and it's clear from the inflect. You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. Of his voice, that he's very panicked. Get somebody out What's going on now, sir? That of a bitch is about six foot nine. I don't know. You see him now, sir? Yes, I'm right at Okay. Like, there's no fucking way. If Bigfoot does exist, there's no fucking way he's six nine, bro. There's no fucking way he's six nine, bro. How the heck is Bigfoot six nine? That's LeBron James. So you're telling me Bigfoot is, is LeBron James? No, Bigfoot is as a least got to be eight foot two. He can't be in the size of a human being. Bigfoot can't be like on the size of LeBron James. No ways. He then states that the thing is looking directly at him before the call abruptly ends. Okay, what's he say you are? He's looking at He got him. He fucking got him. Aside from the manufactured ending, this is a real 911 call that occurred in Washington State back in the early 90s. Even if you don't believe in Bigfoot, you have to <laughs> in Washington State back in the early 90s. Even if you don't believe in Bigfoot, you have to admit that this is an unsettling bit of audio. There was clearly something in that man's yard. If I see this on the, in the bodies, bro. <laughs> Man, he's gone! Bro, look at this nigga's feet, bro. And voice. Bamba cleat. This guy kicks you dead. If he kicks you dead, you ain't breathing. You ain't living after this shit, bro. Yeah, don't you dare even try to come close to this, bro. Like, no, no gun is doing nothing. This, this is a this is a freak of nature. A machine. This paints a vivid picture. I heard something. I heard something. <laughs> Number 7. Charles Hendricks Foster This 911 call started off with a troubling edge and got progressive Five feet of fury, he short shit worse. A man named Charles Hendricks Foster calls 911 and almost immediately tells the operator to shut up so he can speak Do you need police yeah, or an ambulance? Would you shut up and listen to me for a second? He then hangs up Blaming Bro, if I was 991 and you and you are you telling me shut up, I'm heading that fucking phone. Good luck, good luck, bro. Huh? Who are you being rude to? I'm the one trying to save you. Huh? Shut the f yeah, I'm putting that phone down, bro. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, who are you talking to like that? Good luck, time. Phone problems. Foster proceeds to call back and expresses his desire to kill his wife. He begs for a police officer to come out and stop him and calls himself crazy. You can stand a cop out here right now. Please. Okay. I want Sir? to hurt this woman. Leave the fucking house! Leave the fucking house! Why are you calling 911? Leave the fucking house! Leave! Going real bad. He's also persistently rude to the operator, often yelling at her, telling her to shut up, and acting in a generally belligerent manner. Foster's claims and behavior make for spine-chilling listening. To hurt my wife. I don't want to hurt anybody else. Okay, will you go outside to talk to the police, please? In the end, Foster would indeed stab his wife, but she survived. Foster was given 10 years for... Like, what, what? Bro, bro. You, oh my, I'm losing brain cells, I'm losing brain cells. You could have left the house, save yourself from any emergencies, imprisonment. You could have just left that whole situation. And now you tell, yeah, I'm gonna stab my wife. Get away from me. Leave the fucking house. For attempted homicide. Number six, Brandon Lawson. In the early morning of August 9th, 2013, a man named Brandon Lawson disappeared while driving to his father's house. Lawson called his brother Kyle to report that he had run out of gas, and following this, he made a call to 911. 
Please hurry. He also told the dispatcher that he had run out of gas, but he also made darker claims. Lawson referenced guys being pulled over and something about being chased through the woods. Ah, uh, you ran into him, okay. That's the first guy. Do you need an ambulance? Unfortunately, the words are- Wow, wow. This is a, wow. This is a, who the fuck? But what's the fuck, like, screw, screwdriver is they, they're that big? What, what screw is that big that you need this shit? How the flip do you even crank this? There's no way you crank this with your own hands. You tell him you're going. Almost there. Almost out, buddy. Almost out, buddy. Almost out. What? Oh my days. This is going to take long. What the hell? What you screwing down the Eiffel Tower? Are very hard to hear as Lawson is mumbling and seems out of breath. All contact with Lawson was lost soon after, and he hasn't been seen or heard from since. No, I need to call. Okay. What the fuck's going on? Is anybody hurt? Hello? Hello? Human remains were found at the site in 2022 and likely belonged to Lawson. Number five, ordering pizza. What happened? Like, wh what the fuck happened? My days. Oregon 911 dispatcher Tim Tenick received a bizarre call. The woman on the other end said that she wanted to order a pizza and immediately gave her address. Oregon 911. I would like to order a pizza at. You called 911 to order a pizza? Tenick didn't understand at first and calmly told the woman that she was making an inappropriate call. But when the caller claimed that he wasn't getting. Out of it. Out, out of hand, up, bro. I legit would have hanged up, bro. Calling, calling, man, calling a, a hotline to dial pizza. Lost your fucking mind. Her, Tenek immediately understood and played along. This is the wrong number to call for a pizza. No, 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 you're not. I'm getting you now. The rest of the conversation oh. played out in... Mental organizations. If you get, if you get it, you don't get it, forget about it. Mental organizations. The person was there. So she done FBI mode. I'm just gonna order pizza, honey. Oh, her husband's abusing her. I'm just gonna call pizza, honey. Doot, 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 doot. She saw that from CSI, blood. I just need pizza. He understood the assignment. Their minds collected, linked up. Code and Tenek was able to arrange a quiet arrest. Turn your sirens off before you get there. Caller ordered a pizza and agreed with everything I said that there was domestic violence going on. Domestic violence? What? What did I like? If you, if you see my previous videos, what did I say? I'm a detective. Detective OBD. I'm the goat. Put in the comments, Detective OBD, the goat. I deciphered this whole situation. Can't fool me. Cannot. You cannot. Can't fool me. This was a case of domestic abuse made by a woman who was witnessing the physical assault of her mother. The suspect, a man named Simon Lopez, was arrested at the scene. Number four, the empty funeral home. If you're a believer in the paranormal, then the following call is particularly spooky. On August 11th, 2018, Colorado's Pueblo Police Department received a 911 call around 3.30 in the morning. The Police Department Communications Center got a call that they refer to as abandoned. Nobody was on the other end, and the call was traced to a nearby funeral home. Following procedure, the dispatcher called back and an officer was sent out to investigate. The call was answered, but once again, no one responded. Instead, the dispatcher was met with static and the very faint sound of a male voice. Hello? When the officer arrived at the funeral home, he saw that all the lights were off and that it was clearly closed. Not sure about you, but ghost calls are a big no thanks from us. Number three. There were no, there were no ghost call. At the, at the, it's a butt dial, bro. They're on a butt dial. They're on a butt dial. There were no ghost call. It's a butt dial, bro. Mike Evans calls on himself. 
This case shares many similarities with the story of Checkington Sinclair. Young Jake Evans of Texas calls 911 and reports that he killed both his mother and sister. Is there any reason that you were so angry at your mother and your sister? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I was That's crack. It's fucking crack. Killed him for no reason. That's crack, bro. It's weird. I wasn't even really angry with him. He remains disturbingly calm throughout the lengthy call and explains with emotional detachment why he killed them. Perhaps most troubling is Evans' admission that he was planning on killing someone for a long time and that he is in a. So what? Kids, kids, stay the fuck away from drugs. Because this is the type of shit that happens. This nigga's on crack, bro. I can, I can see it in his eyes. I can see it in his eyes, a fucking crackhead. Fucking joke, man. His own words, quote, evil. I, I think, I, obviously, you know, I'm pretty, uh, I guess, evil. Crack makes you satanic. Crack makes you satanic, bro. If you see a nigga, how niggas on crack be moving, bro? That ain't human, bro. That That is some... But, uh, that's, uh, whatever. Okay, All right. All right. The dispatcher remains studiously professional throughout the call even when Evans goes into graphic and upsetting detail about their deaths. It's a chilling call, both in terms of tone and content. Evans was arrested following the call and sentenced to 45 years in prison. Evans and the Only attorney. 45 years? And man, they got two life sentences. If he died and he came back to life, he'd still be in prison. And this guy's only getting 45 years. That's a fucking violation. Disagree. It's because he's white. It's because he's white. The other guy, since he was black, they Hey, oi, oi! Racism! Racism! I've had enough! It's, it's 2023. He will serve two 45 year prison sentences running concurrently. His attorney read from a letter from Evans' family. Number two Missing Girl Calls the Police. On April 6, 1986, young Antoinette Cayadito disappeared from her New Mexico home. I didn't start panicking until we checked with all the neighbors, went to every house, and nobody had s no sight seen of her. According to her sister Wendy, Cayadito answered a knock at the door and was kidnapped by two men. One year after she disappeared, a young girl claiming to be Cayadito phoned the police. The call is short but incredibly disturbing. The girl is clearly distressed, identifies herself as Antoinette Cayadito, and claims that she is in Albuquerque. I'm Antoinette Cayadito. Albuquerque. Albuquerque, what? The, if you you know anyhow you come from Albuquerque, what the fuck Na type of name is that? Before she can give more information, an adult can be heard chastising the girl for using the phone, and the girl screams in response. Cayadito's mother listened to the audio and believed that it was indeed her daughter. Unfortunately, nothing came of the call, and Cayadito remains missing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The weeby calls of- Why is this guy naked? Why is this guy naked? Oh my days. Ain't this the motherfucker from my Predator video? Oh my fucking days. The guy that's naked in the- Oh my days. It's fucking him. It's fucking him. Paul Michael Stephanie. Throughout the early 1980s, Paul Michael Stephanie of Minnesota killed three women and severely oh, injured- Oh, no, no, no. It's not him. It's not him. It's not him. It's not him. Other two. He became known as the weepy voiced killer as he regularly called the police to report on himself. In the terrifying calls, Stephanie explains in a tearful and high pitched voice that he killed the women and begs the authorities to capture him. Please don't talk to him, please. <laughs> yeah. Please don't talk to some of this shit. <laughs> Pussy! And begs the authorities to capture him. Please don't talk to this person. I'm sorry, I killed that girl. On we don't give a fuck! We don't give a fuck! You're going to jail! That's the sound of the bars closing. Going to jail. 
I'm gonna eat your ass up in jail, bro. He even shows remorse and apologizes for their deaths. These are extremely creepy calls. And finally, I just stabbed somebody with an ice pick. I can't stop my... What, what, the, what the heck's an ice pick? Okay, guys, so we have an ice pick here. Oh, shit, this is an ice pick. Bamba cleat. Okay, nah, 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 nah. Is that possible? That's possible. Shit! That shit is... It's a... It's a Sharpie Condensi. It's a Sharpie Condensi. So it, it's definitely possible. Shit! At that fuck. And that's like a... So like if you get stabbed with that shit, damn bro, it's like pierce, it's piercing like, it's, it's a straight pierce, it's a straight pierce, it's very vital, very vital. With Stephanie's frightening voice blending uncomfortably with the macabre and violent content, Stephanie was arrested after attacking another woman and was thrown in prison. What's the address? I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> and recognizing the- Oh no! Ooh, why are you crying bro? Why? What the fuck is wrong with these people? Hmm? What goes on to the mental societies? Like, bro, you are a killer, bro. Like, you, like, bro, like, you acting innocent, but you, you are scum bastard. You are scum bastard. So I don't know why you act, you're talking like shit, bro. Get the fuck. Get the fuck. Like, you should be dead. Like, Thinking it should be his death sentence, bruv. Don't know what the fuck. Stefani was caught when he called for medical help and sentenced to prison. He died from cancer in 1998 at the age 53. Serves him right. These guys are fucking. These are fuckers, bro. These are fuckers, bruv. These are fuckers, bruv. Like, hey, bro. Fuck the fuck. You see, every one of those guys, fuck all of them. Anyways, guys, it's been your boy BT. Ah, that video is fucking creepy as fuck. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, shit. Ah! Anyways, it's been your boy BT. Please like, comment, subscribe. Peace.